So, assalamu alaikum and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Muzna Al Makrashi and I'm, I'm an emergency resident. And we'll start with the first presentation of the day, which is a general approach to a poison patient. So do we need to know about toxicology? Are toxins are coming around us? Did you seen or encountered any toxin? The answer is absolutely yes, toxins are all around us. You may identify already some of the structures in the background at your environment, maybe even at your home. So yes, you, know, you need to know about toxins. Saying that, I will say also that the dose determine the toxicity actually. What is the issue in Oman? Do we have this issue? Yes, we have it. This is a retrospective study done in our local health centers, 45 of them, to determine the pattern of toxicity. The majority of cases as expected is the pediatric age group. The largest category was the animal bite and stinks related to our environment. Ingestion of substances is the next highest. This is include food, medication, and household products. The most related uh, cases was paracetamol, and we have a significant number of suicidal attempts, about 6%. This is in 2003. You can imagine that the situation is much worse and the problem is much bigger uh, nowadays. So then do we need to panic about these patients, about the poison patients? Actually, you don't need to panic. We are here to help you. And today we'll give you a simple approach to uh, a poison patient that will be uh, will be easily uh, done in a local health center or in a primary care uh, setting. So we'll teach you how to approach a patient in terms of history examination investigation, and we'll touch a little bit on uh, GID contamination. So if we say simply how to approach a patient you need two major about the first one is you need to diagnose and this will be done by history physical examination toxic drone recognition and some specific diagnostic testing and meanwhile simultaneously you will need to start your treatment starting with your abcs there is some crucial specifications related to toxicology that for an airway you will consider an antidote and in D you will consider decontamination. And then you have E enhanced elimination focus therapy and F and of course always get a toxicology or toxicologist help. So let's start with our ABCs. What do you want to see in airways? It's extremely important to look for the airways is there is an, any evidence of obstruction is intubation is needed you need to determine this and do it if needed what might produce an airway obstruction in toxicology cases is it a foreign body is there is an anaphylactic shock is it a hydrocarbon is it a corrosive injury that is obstructing my patient airway determine whether your patient can handle his airway if yes proceed to b if no please intubate your patient and breathing, look to your patient. Is your patient breathing to begin with? Is he hypoventilating? If he's hypoventilating, do you need to think about opioid? If opioid, do you need to give an elixir? There is increased secretion. What is the tox that will give you increased sec secretion? Is it organophosphate? Something to keep in mind. And then just as it, is there is any bronchospasm? While you are surveying your patient, start thinking about causes. And circulation, you want to check that BP and heart rate extremities is my patient is in shock. It will be a good idea now to start him on some IV fluid. Is there is arrhythmia, check your monitor. Is it bradycardia, is it tachycardia? And probably will be a very good idea to get an ECG by this time. Indeed, you will think about the Glasgow coma scale for the patient. You will examine those pupils very carefully. It will give you a great hint about the toxidrome we are dealing with check their airflow, correct it, and check for any focal findings. This primary self survey will be done in not more than two, three minutes. And then in history, you really have to think about yourself as a detective. 
you need to know a lot of information. And there is a simple approach in history, which is the five W's. The first one is who. You want to know the patient, what is his job, and what is his way to determine the dose, if any antidote is needed. And then what he ingested, the name, the dose, the route, the concentration, if you have the bottle, it's great. And please always, always, always consider co-ingestion. When the time of ingestion, this will help you with the course of the disease. And if you can give that activated charcoal within one hour, where is it in a, in a farm? You can consider pesticide, is it at home? You can consider drugs. And sometimes you have to trace where, where the patient were uh, at the time. Why your patient have ingested those or exposed to those? Is it intentional? Is it accidental? Is he trying to suicide? And the most important thing is from where you can get this history if your patient is altered. If your patient is speaking, you still can take some history, but be careful that you will be deceived if he is trying to suicide. Then you can collect information from family, friends, paramedics, and police. Physical examination within 30 seconds, you have to get vital signs, mental status, skin, color, temperature, and sweating, pupil size, and uh, bowel and bladder function, and some neurological examination. After you finish this, you can, um, your patient is stable, you already supported him, you can do your systemic exam head to toe. And don't forget to check your patient pockets, you will get some hints there. Saying that all of this you will lead you to the toxidromes, what is actually a collection of signs and symptoms that will uh, guide you toward the toxicity. What I need you to know or to notice that all the toxidromes need the initial vital signs or the initial physical exam, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, bubbles, power sounds, and diaphoresis, and this will lead you to specific toxidromes and you can manage accordingly. So without history, even you can get a great deal from the physical examination. Investigations really will be very specific to what you are thinking you are dealing with. If ABG is very grateful to get there is any acidosis, lactic acidosis, methemoglobinemia, ECG in case of any uh, arrhythmias or cardiotoxins you are considering. Other things like uh, drug levels, drug levels, uh, alcohol screen, and other things you, ca you can do it according to your case. X-rays or radiographs are of limited benefit in toxicology, but some toxins like heavy metals can appear like radio-opaque, as you can see in this uh, picture on your right. So this is simply how to approach that patient. What other thing you can do is like GI decontamination. It's important because you can do part of it in, in the primary healthcare setting, actually. So what do we have? Emesis that you will induce vomiting. It has no more role. Please, please, please don't induce vomiting. Don't ask your, your patient to vomit. The risk is more way than the benefit. Activated charcoal, we'll speak about this in a second. Gastric lavage and whole bowel irrigation, which is rarely, and I don't think it's uh, suitable to be done in a primary healthcare setting and you need to secure the airway on that. So activated charcoal, what you can do in local health center, is it the agent of choice, saying that you need to measure uh, benefit versus risk, and you need to consider if your agent actually can bind to that activated charcoal. Some agents, like you can see in the box on, your, uh, on the right, does not bind. And then you have to secure the airway. If you cannot secure the airway or your patient is altered, you need to intubate before getting this and consider please aspiration. Don't force the activated charcoal in your patient like this poor dog. You can add, add it to Denit, to cola or any other uh, alternative, especially in pediatric age group. Gastric lavage and whole bowel irrigation, rarely indicated, maybe in massive ingestions that are life-threatening and you should secure airway before you are doing that and should be uh, done not in a, in a primary healthcare setting. So this is 